you know, tonight's game, obviously six games to go, a, a team that you know from a, a few weeks back, but also got Zach Levine back. Just how big of a challenge is this for you guys tonight after what you were able to do is all the good things in Orlando the other night? Well, this is a much different challenge, obviously. They're, this is not the, you know, um, Chicago Bulls from the standpoint of, you know, a record. This is their best version because they've got everybody back. They've got everybody healthy. They looked great last night. Um, you know, obviously losing Levine for that amount of time would hurt anybody this late in the season, but they can play big, they can play physical. Um, they've got two all-stars that both are, you know, both last night played it and looked like those all-stars that they are and just have a lot of depth. It's a, um, you know, it's a team that plays big. Some will mix in some smaller lineups, but has a lot of different ways they can play. And they gave us fits with their length and their um, activity when we played them in Boston a few weeks ago without Levine. And, um, you know, so tonight will be, you know, really difficult. We're going to have to play really well to win. John Corrales. Brad, is uh, Robert playing tonight? And he's out. out. Um, when did he hurt the left toe? And how serious is this? How long, how long do you anticipate him being out? Well, turf toe is an interesting one, right? Because it's it's for anybody that's ever had it, it's it's a nuisance. It's it's uh, it's a difficult thing to deal with. Um, he's meeting with specialists and figuring out the best, you know, uh, method of attack. He he almost sat out Wednesday. It's one of those things that you can play through, but the the pain is pretty significant. And I think that um, you know each time he plays, it's going to feel more and more. So uh, he's going to sit tonight. And I don't know what his availability will be like any time in the next week. Um, but, uh, you know, obviously we're going to have to have other guys step up. And it's not ideal. Matt Vitor. Building off that with, with Tristan uh, being injured recently, are you particularly careful not to play him too many minutes? And, and does, does, that, uh, does that put that much more on other guys? Well, I mean, he's going to, you know, anybody that's cleared to play, obviously he's got a, a, you know, it was a pec strain. He feels a lot better um, in the last two days. So it's not a leg issue. So there's not like a minutes restriction or anything like that on, on Tristan. We'll listen to him if he has any issues at all. Obviously we'll manage that accordingly, but you know, Luke's got to be ready. Taco's got to be ready. Um, Grant as a small ball five, which is a lot more difficult against this team just because of how big they are how many good players they have at that position. You know, I think obviously you talk about Vucevic, but then you talk about Tice and you talk about Thaddeus Young and, um, you know, even Markin in play some five for them. They've got a lot of answers at that spot. So it's going to be a challenge. Chuck Sorsky. Sorry, Coach. Um, you know, we uh, know quite a bit now about Tice seeing him play every day, but I've got a question about Javante Green. Can you give us an idea about what, what you saw in him with Boston and what, you know, the Bulls can expect out of him? Ultimate energy raiser. Great teammate. Um, obviously a great athlete. You saw how he turned the game two games ago that, you know, went from 25 to five or six point deficit real quick, and he played a huge role in that. thought he played well again last night. He can, he can boost a team with his cutting, his athleticism, and his energy. And he is as good of a teammate as there is, you know, as far as like, you know, you, you don't play him a few games. He just comes to work, play him some. He's just ready to play. Like uh, I always got the impression that, you know, he balanced the, you know, the the thirst and the hunger to take advantage of this opportunity with great perspective, which is oftentimes very hard. And, um, you know, I, I, th I think the world of Javante. Gary Washburn. Hey, Brad, uh, when Jabari Parker first got here, you, you kind of threw him into the rotation. He had carved out some minutes. He hasn't played as much lately. Is there anything you're seeing from him, or is it just a lineup situation? Uh, what do you see out of Jabari? Yeah, I mean, well, we, we threw him in there, obviously. Um, we're also dealing with some guys that are missing, um, and we are again now, so you, you may see him again. Um, he's still just learning – kind of how, you know, how we play on both ends. He, he can do some things that he, um, you know, as far as scoring the ball in, in certain opportunities in certain situations, um, 
but in the last couple of games or however many games it's been, four games, whatever, just decided to go with other guys that have been here and are more um, experienced in playing together would be the best way to put it. But, you know, he, he there's a chance that we could see him, Gary, at a at a four tonight or even a small ball five. You know, we'll see how the five thing goes with us tonight um, because, that, I mean, that's a real point of concern tonight with, with their um, – you know, versatility and their ability to be good at that position. Final question, Jared Weiss. Uh, Javante and Tice were very well-liked players in the locker room. Could you speak more to, I guess, what impact they had on the locker room and what the challenge was and is of kind of replacing that role in the locker room after they're traded? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that that's, that's real. Um, and uh, we've, we've had a, a good locker room with everybody that's been in our locker room this year, um, you know, and we haven't always been uh, a great basketball team. We've had our issues, but we, but, but the character of the people in the locker room has not been it. Like it's, it's a good group of guys and uh, they compete, they play together, they care about each other. They're accountable when things don't go well, they're easy to coach all that, all that good stuff. Uh, and Javante and Tice were just, I think, leaders of that in a lot of ways. Like their attitudes were just great. Um, Tice was a guy that, um, you know, bid his time to get an opportunity last year and absolutely maximized it. And that has continued uh, throughout this year and I'm sure will continue on throughout his career. And then Javante, I mean, I think the best thing, and I probably should have mentioned this when Chuck asked, but, you know, Javante had a non-guarantee date, which a lot of times passes and guys – get replaced you try new things you try to bring in new guys but you just couldn't do it because it's kind of teammate he was and uh and I think that that's stuff that um is a great testament to both of them um, I'm happy for both of them they're both happy here uh they both love playing for Billy um and they love the guys they're playing with and so that's been uh you know you you, you feel good seeing that all right we'll wrap it up right there